Hey guys, so today we just have two things on the docket to get done. Um, we've been having kind of stormy night weather. It's getting pretty cold at night. So I'm getting a little bit aware of the fact that it's turning into winter. Anyway, that's kind of beside the point. I've been moving my plants inside and then back out on stormy nights because I don't want them to blow over or get damaged. Yeah, we had a really windy day yesterday. Um, and I just think I need to... Wow, that's so much better. Anyway, I have a whole bunch of plants in my kitchen on my dining table. It's kind of turned into my plant table, my plant project table, but I need to move everything back out here um, because I'm not ready to keep them inside yet because I haven't done my winter preparations on them. Um, I'm not trying to bring like pests into my house or anything. So, I mean, I guess I might have yesterday when I brought them in, but what can we do, you know? Let's see. Kind of rearranging things here as I do this. So that's where I'm kind of at right now with my outside plants. I need to treat everything before it comes in through the winter. We're getting close though. Move this. There we go. Okay. There we go. And all my little succulents. Cute. That's everything, much better. Now that we have that out of the way. So actually the point of today's video is this, which is my, gosh, what is it? My Crassula ovata. It, it actually, it actually, oh, there's a plane. It's loud. Oh, it's like a, one of those life flight helicopters. Oh no, I hope everybody's okay. Hang on, bud, come lay down. It's okay, are you stressed out? Because I moved all that stuff. It was kind of scary. My good boy. Hmm. Wonder where it's going. My last video was my like all-time favorite plants video. If you if you didn't watch it, this was included in that. And when I went to go film that video, that's actually when I found that my plant is like severely hydrophobic. Hey guys, so my Crassula ovata or jade plant is quite thirsty and also the substrate is very hydrophobic so I thought we would take care of that and I would show you what I do. Some of the signs that the substrate is hydrophobic is that I've watered it pretty recently but there are clear signs that the plant is still thirsty so um, like you can see here this leaf is quite wrinkled and like curled almost like this leaf here is curled it's very very thirsty so when I look closer to the soil which it's a little bit hard because you know, the plant's overtaking. Rock solid. Rock freaking solid. I've got a bowl of secondary water. I'm just gonna soak this plant while I film a video. Um, and then in like an hour or two, we'll come back and take care of the rest of the plant. Oh my gosh, you guys, this thing is floating. I'm just gonna stick this puppy in there. You can see it's like tipping over because it's so afraid of this water. <laughs> Hydrophobic soil happens when your plant dries out too much in between waterings. This plant has been potted in here for a really long time, so that's probably why. But I'm just going to soak this until I'm able to pull the plant out of the planter to give it some fresh soil. Since it needs to be repotted anyway, the roots are coming out of the bottom of the pot. So that's what we're going to do. It's just going to be here soaking. I will see you back when it's ready. <laughs> I, I didn't realize all this time and it's probably been this way for a while. So when a plant gets hydrophobic, the substrate will no longer absorb water and it actually repels water. I think it's more common with, um, if you're using substrates with peat moss, which I don't use anymore, but back when I potted this plant, th that is what I used because it's what most like bagged soil is made from, like the base of most bagged soil. Anyway, I have been soaking this in water for two days now, <laughs> just in this big purple bowl of water and it has definitely softened up. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really, I've never had this issue before, so I'm just kind of winging it right now, but oh my gosh, the roots, wow, they look amazing. Let me get y'all up close, get a good look at them. I have had this plant potted into the six inch planter since it was just like a tiny little thing. I got it on, oh, when my mom and I took a little road trip to go plant shopping in Vegas. That's like what we did the whole weekend. And that was kind of a long time ago. It was before I was 
before I had kids or anything or even the thought of having a kid. So it's been a long time, definitely due for a repot, but look at those roots. I have probably needed to repot this for a while, but fortunately this plant is pretty uh, forgiving. Yeah, I'm just gonna break up the soil a little bit. I, I'm gonna have to tear up a, a, some of these roots but I'm going to try and avoid that as much as possible. So anyway, back to the hydrophobic soil thing. This issue is definitely more common in the plants you're not watering all the time. So cacti and succulents really. Um, and if you are a chronic underwaterer, then I would say this is something that you maybe should keep an eye out for. The way I noticed this is it was looking really thirsty, even though I had watered it a couple of days before. And that's how I knew it wasn't really absorbing any of the water I was putting in. It just kind of seemed like it was dripping through. And yeah, that's how you really can tell is if you're watering your plant and it looks like it's still thirsty. Although that can also mean root rot, but I knew that wasn't the case for this one. Let's see if we can... pull a bunch of these apart. Normally I would just go ahead and repot this whole root ball into the new planter I'll be putting it in, but I want to get rid as, of as much of this substrate as I can. And unfortunately that is going to, you know, require some root breakage, actually probably kind of a lot of root breakage, although I'm going to be as careful as I can, kind of shimmy it. Gosh, I kind of need to like tear it. Well, you know what? I actually feel Oh, there we go. We're making some progress. You can continue to use soil that's been hydrophobic. You just um, have to add, I mean, there's like a whole plethora of things you can add. I've heard that if you add a little bit of dish soap to the top of the soil, it'll help it start to absorb the moisture again, or um, they have soil, what's it called? Conditioners, I think is what it is. You can water your plant with some of the conditioner stuff and it will make it so it can absorb soil or absorb the water again. And then also um, if you like are breaking it up like this and wanna reuse it, you'll have to add in some organic matter to repair it. So I'm not going to be doing that today though. I'm just gonna repot it into some fresh substrate because I don't really like peat moss as a substrate period. And then I also will not be reusing it because there's like so much, this is root. This is like straight root ball. <laughs> And I don't really want broken roots rotting in whatever I would end up potting in this. I'm just not gonna go that route. We're just gonna give it something a little fresh. Really trying to get in there, break it up. This is so fun, this is so nice. <laughs> and the weather is perfect out here. I love it. Let's pull these little babies out so I can just stick them in the top. Or you know what? I'm not going to put them in here. I don't really want them in here. I'm going to give them their own little thing. So we'll do that next. Oh, there we go. There we go. And yeah, we did tear up a bunch of these roots, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm not worried about it. Well, a little. I have a little healthy amount of worry, but especially where this is such like a tolerant plant. And that's kind of a good thing that this tends to happen more with um, succulents and cacti because they are very forgiving about stuff like this most of the time. <laughs> So I think that that's pretty good. I got most of it off the roots. We still have a healthy amount of roots left on there. They're pretty thick and juicy ones. Most of what got ripped off were just the tiny little webby roots. Um, we, we do have a lot of really good ones in there still though. These are the ones I'm mostly <laughs> trying not to rip apart. These like main thick roots. Okay. We're going to just set this here. And what I will be planting it in is this this planter here with a really big drainage hole on the bottom. I really like this shape of planter for this like tree looking plant. And where this has a really wide top, it's going to allow the trunk to grow even wider. Whereas in here, it was trapped in there pretty good. You know what, I take it back. I'm gonna use this to fill in the bottom because I don't want it to go to waste. So we're just gonna fill up the bottom of it with this. And then for the top, I'm just gonna use go-to mix. This has a little bit of everything in it. <laughs> it's lasted a very long time. Add in a layer. We're gonna put the plant in like that. Yeah, that'll be really cute. I think that looks good. Okay, and backfill.
the other way that you can really tell if you have hydrophobic soil is if you try to like scratch the top of it or like stick your finger in, it's like a rock. Just so you know what to look out for. Now back to edges. What are you doing? What are you doing? Move, Biz. Move. What are you doing? I am taking care of my plant. What are you doing? I did so watching with me. You don't want to sit out here with me? Okay, so I think I've got enough. Well, yeah. I think I've got enough substrate in here, but we are going to let it soak in this bowl again. And we'll see if any air pockets fill in and I need to add some more. It's just gonna be sitting on the ground over here, but we need to, I'm gonna go grab some like planters for these. Okay. We will actually be reusing these little plastic cups that I put holes into the bottom and just the same substrate. I love that my plant did this. I don't even know how it happened because there's no like leaves on the soil. Oh, well, actually it looks like they did come from leaves that maybe fell. Scoop a little bit up, pop it in and backfill. Cute, where's the other one? Oh, right there, let's zoom you in for this one. This is a side note, but I bought this <laughs> sprayer from Amazon because I saw it in one of Benji's videos and it's like really nice looking and you like pump it. I freaking love this thing. This is one of my best plant purchases of all time. So I'm really glad to have, you know, seen it in a Benji video. Um, I also recommend it because it's awesome and it's cute. It looks good and it works so well. I use it for pretty much everything, watering all of my small plants and also my bog garden, um, really everything. Love it. It was the best $20 I ever spent. Um, I will also have it linked down below or you can go to Benji's channel and get it from his link since that's where, you know, I was inspired to buy it from. Oh, I think the substrate looks so pretty. I have some, what is this stuff called? What is this freaking stuff called? It's like kind of metallic-y looking. This mix just looks really good. You don't need like a topper or anything for it because it's already just pretty on its own, which I really like. Okay, there's our little plants. While our mama plant is still over here soaking up some water, let's go put these guys away. Okay, so welcome to my, this weird room. Oh, the lighting, the lighting. This is my filming room that I haven't filmed in for a really long time because that's for another video actually. I'm just gonna set the plants here on this little silver dish um, and it's gonna sit on top of this terrarium to help give it a little more sun because this is a south window and the light is pretty strong here. So where I think these plants will like it, I also think the terrarium will appreciate having a little bit more shade. Uh, so win, 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 as Michael Scott would say. <gasps> Cute, okay. That's perfect because now I can put, I can fill this up with a bunch of the other little succulent babies that I have that I don't think would perform very well in the grow tent. Yeah, they can live here to propagate. So I, I quite like this setup. Maybe we need to air this out a little bit. I did just water it not that long ago. It's pretty humid in here. This is my terrarium that I built the aqua soil moss wall back here. And this thing, and it has grown in really well. The plants seem to be doing really well. And oh, I love it. I love it. And I love those. That makes me so excited for some reason. <laughs>
Like, look at how pretty that substrate looks. Don't you think it just looks so chunky and well-rounded? Because <laughs> there's so much stuff in there, but I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, so I will keep you posted on these in future videos. So this is bottom watering very slowly. So I think we're just gonna <laughs> bite the bullet and water it from the top. I kind of don't like watering from the top with um, a watering can, especially once I've just, especially when I've just recently potted a plant because um, it kind of seems like it blows, moves the substrate around a little bit too much. That is actually a reason I really like the sprayer, the pressurized sprayer specifically, because it makes top watering plants like this where I don't want the soil to get displaced as much a little bit easier. Quick little spray. Let me just dink around with it a little bit more <laughs> till I get it positioned exactly how I want it to. It seems like it's kind of sinking down. Um, I'm sure there were like air pockets that are filling in as I wet this. So that's probably why it's sinking down. There we go. So that it is as compacted in as it can be. That is one thing about my soil mix. It is not great at compacting, which is mostly a good thing, but sometimes it can be a little frustrating, like in situations like this, where you're trying to, you know, like shimmy the plant perfectly in place. Um, the plants do tend to move around a little bit in this mix at first, but you know, once they start getting that root growth, that root growth, and you've watered it a few times, then that'll stop. And it really helps prevent <laughs> overwatering because that's something I struggle with. I am an overwaterer uh, and this is very airy. So I don't have a lot of root rot issues. I know we're fixing a hydrophobic underwatered plant, but that's not the norm for me. I'm definitely a drown my plants with, <laughs> with care kind of gal most of the time. Look at that, and I can move this. Okay. Oh, what happened? Let's move that out of the way. We watered this little monstera elbow propagation while we were waiting. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give it one more really good spray cause we're gonna move it inside. Problem solved. That was easy. <laughs> Felt good. For the saucer, we're gonna use this. I'm gonna let it drain a little bit though. Let's go like this. Get out some of the extra water. Okay, you know what, we're actually good. Um, I'm gonna use this as the saucer. It's like a, I think it's like a candle. I don't know, it's a plate that you put a candle on. And we're gonna go put it in its spot that it's been living since I moved into this house. It will be living. Okay, well, I moved some spider plants here, moving them back into my room. You know what? I did not test to make sure that this would fit right here. Oh no, it's not going to fit. Oh yeah, it is. We are good, that's some luck. Cute, I love it, okay. And yeah, like I said, this is where it has been living um, since I moved into this house. So it has grown really, really well here. Obviously I need to stay a little more on top of watering it so I don't end up with the hydrophobic soil, but there's no peat moss in my potting mix. So that's a little bit less likely now. I am very happy to have this out of the way. And thank you so much for hanging out with me while we did this. It feels nice to have that out of the way, not have to worry about it anymore. The next few days, I'm going to be taking care of my outside plants, um, treating them to bring them back inside and finding a spot for them to live through the winter. That'll be my next upload. So I hope to see you back here on Monday. But that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!